Hi, my name is John Burns from Funoco Pro Classes in New York City. And today I would like to show you how to keyframe some basic effects in your clips in Final Cut Pro X. So I've laid down four random clips on the timeline and I'm going to go to the second one um, where she's holding a shirt. And I want to say put a black and white effect on it, but maybe I would like it to go from black and white to color as it plays. So that's uh, keyframing. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the clip. And then I'm going to go to the first frame here, which I know I'm on the first frame because I have this little left angle on the bottom left of the viewer. Then I'm going to go to my effects icon in Final Cut Pro X and click it, and my effects window will open up. And here I have all my effects, and I can mouse over them just to see about what they'll do. So as I mouse over them, I get a preview of the effect itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down to this black and white effect. And I can put it on in either two ways. I can drag it into the clip by grabbing it and just dragging it inside the clip or I can double click it. Now before I do either of those I'm going to open up my inspector here okay and if you with the clip highlight I will get the controls for that clip in the inspector so here you see at the top of the inspector it says effects but you don't see any effects in there because there are none in the clip right now so I'm going to go back to my black and white uh, effect here, and I could either drag it in the clip or I can double click it. I'm going to go ahead and double click it, okay, and that puts the effect in the clip. So you can see the clip turn black and white, but now I'd like to, it to go from black and white to color, okay. So I'm on the first frame of the clip, and in every effect you're going to see keyframes here. Here are your keyframes. Um, so basically there's two keyframes here, and if I open up this arrow there's even more keyframes. Um, I can slide the sliders around so here I can see that this slider makes the clip go black and white to color. I can see that um, you know here I can mess with the red slider and here you have a green slider. So I have, you know every effects have their own sliders. It could be a wheel, it could be a slider, it could be a color palette such as this. But when you see a keyframe these little diamonds next to it the control that means you can change that control as the video plays. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this reset button to reset my uh, black and white filter back to its default value. And I'm going to set the slider to 100% uh, black and white. And I can either hit this one keyframe here and put that on so it remembers that one slider or I can hit all the keyframes in that control panel so that um, it will anchor any move I make uh, from where my play head is. I'm going to go ahead and do that and, and uh, hit that little add keyframe uh, command there. All you got to do when you hit that first keyframe in a clip is move the play head to somewhere else and then change the value. It will automatically generate keyframes for you to that value. So now I slid the slider back and you can see the keyframe here has been generated um, to do that. So if I drag through the clip, I will see that it goes black and white to color. Okay, and if I wanted to go at this point back to black and white, I would just drag the amount slider over. Maybe I want to change, you know, some of these other values. So it knows to do that now at that point in time. So as I drag through the clip, I go black and white to color and then you know, I did my other sliders uh, at that value. So basically, all the keyframes work the same. Um, you choose a value, you put the playhead there, choose a value, and hit the keyframe, and the computer will remember that keyframe um, after your playhead leaves that area. So if I go to another clip here, okay, and I want to start putting an effect in that, I'm going to go and click it and I get the inspector controls for that clip here and you can see there's no effects in this clip and again I want to start on the first frame I don't have to start on the first frame uh, but it's good to know where your play head is when you're making these keyframes and now I'm going to go to the effects again in Final Cut Pro X and I'm going to hit blur and I'm going to click on the Gaussian and I'm going to go ahead and double click it to put it in the clip and I can see that the Gaussian uh, effect 
appears under the effects uh, word in my inspector. So as I slide the sliders around again, I can see that it makes it blurry and I can see I have other sliders here, horizontal and vertical. And I'm going to go ahead and start at this position. So wherever I, wherever I leave the sliders here and I hit the keyframe, and I could do it either manually or with the add keyframe button, it will remember at this point in time to be at exactly those values. <coughs> so like before, and, like mo and the same as in doing motion, all you have to do is move the playhead and then change the values. And automatically, Final Cut Pro X will keyframe that area, that frame where the playhead is to those values. So you don't have to keyframe every frame because Final Cut Pro X will figure out what it takes to get from one value to another. I can now drag through this clip and see that it goes blurry to clear, um, just like I keyframed it. Now if I want to hold the value, like let's say I want it to stay uh, clear up until this point, I can manually hit a keyframe which automatically takes the values of the keyframes to the left. So if you move your playhead away from those keyframes, nothing will change between uh, the two keyframes because the values are the same. And now all I have to do is move my playhead uh, somewhere else and change it back to blurry, the sliders. And I can see everything's going back to blurry. And it already made the keyframes for me because I changed the values of when I moved the playhead. So now I can see that it goes um, from clear back to blurry again. You can see the sliders moving in the uh, effects in the inspector. If I want to change the timing of that effect, maybe I want it to get blurry or quicker, or I want it to um, stay clear longer or shorter, I can now open up the uh, clip and go to show video animation. And this window will pop up showing you your keyframes for the blur, which is the same window you would use for motion. Um, and I can see my keyframes are here. Here's my first keyframe and here's my second keyframe, which tells it to get clear. So the first one tells it to get to be blurry and the, this one tells it to be clear. The third keyframe is holding the clear value here and the fourth keyframe gets blurry again. So if I drag through this, you can see exactly how these keyframes are set. So the first one is blurry, and then it goes clear here on this keyframe. Stays clear up until here, because we manually hit the keyframe and moved away from it, and now it gets blurry again. So if I want to change the timing, let's say I want it to take longer to get clear, I can just drag this keyframe over, okay? Um, and right now that's just the amount because right now instead of choosing all the sliders which actually I wanted I'm just moving the amount slider so I would actually like to move all the, uh, the keyframes at once on all the controls so that my effect stays the same and I'm just changing the timing so I'm going to go ahead and undo that move and I'm going to go ahead and change this to all so it moves all keyframes and now when I drag this over, it's moving all three of those uh, keyframes over on that frame. So now it goes blurry to clear in a much longer time, holds clear for a shorter time, and then goes blurry again. So by opening it up the show video animation window, um, you get to change the timing of the keyframes without having to redo them. Another thing is if I want to change the value of the keyframe, I have to be right on that keyframe. So if I click on the keyframe, I can change the value of that keyframe without generating a new keyframe. So if I want it to be a little more blurry um, on this keyframe, I can go ahead and get on it and then change it. So that's basically how you keyframe most of your effects. Some of the uh, controls will be a slider, some will be a color palette, some will be a wheel. But the technique is basically the same. You would Put your playhead where you want that keyframe to be, set the value the way you want it to be, and then hit the keyframe. Then all you have to do is move the playhead to a, another position and change the values. I hope this clears up keyframing a little bit, and uh, I'll be back with some more tutorials soon. Thank you.